Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Arab Tov. I'm Cantor Perrine Anchor. <laughs> Dean Emerita of AJRCA, and I am really happy to welcome all of you here in a place that's very special to me and to all of you. AJRCA is a very special place because we welcome people of all denominations of Judaism, and in our chaplaincy, even some who are not Jewish, who are part of our wonderful chaplaincy program. The school is magical. It has uh, lots of students, lots of talent, lots of devotion, beautiful instructors, and ever, ever growing. So tonight, uh, when our students, our cantorial students, receive their ordination, they have two parts. One is a thesis, and the other is presenting a recital. Part of the recital is not only creating the music that they sing, but also the program notes that you will see. It takes a lot of investigation, a lot of love, and a lot of cuts because the students want to do hundreds of pieces. They want to show you everything they've learned in all these years. So I thank you all for being here. I know you're here to celebrate Arab Cantor, Hazan, Josh Goldberg. So without further ado. Cantor Heather Hoopside. Thank you all so much for coming to Kol Haneshama, highlights of synagogue song from the 19th, 
20th and 21st centuries. So kol haneshama sort of has a double meaning. If you spell it with a kaf, kol means all, so all living things, but it's kind of a homophone. If you spell it with a kuf, it means the voice of the soul, voice of the spirit. So tonight, all us living things uh, will be using our voices. I'll be using my voice to show the eternal voice of the Jewish spirit through three entire centuries of Jewish music, going back from 1821 all the way to 2023. So we'll continue with this wonderful quartet led by Dr. Tali Todmore. Oh, 
Shachrit, Shachrit, Shachrit be'arvid, ve'achnas adorechim, ve'achnas adorechim, uvikur cholim, uvikur cholim, uvikur cholim, ve'achnas adkana, ulevayar hamed. Yeah, yeah. 
Chris Myers joining us on the organ for some health month.
It's my pleasure to call up my friend, my mentor, my cantorial hero, cantor Chaim Frankel. <laughs> and this is a piece written by your father, Uri Frankel, a blessed memory. Honored to be here with you.
continue with some Ami Aloni. This is his Ahavat Olam, which has been sung many times in this sanctuary. Next one is a medley, two pieces by Michael Isaacson. First is Shiviti, followed by Sim Shalom. Shiviti Adonai, Lenegi Tamid, Kimimini Abam Lemot. 
Achin Samach Libi, Hayadel Kevodi, Af Besari, Nishkon Laveta, Kilotazov Nafshi Lishol, Loti Tain Hasid Halir Rot Shahat, Todi. So this prayer is very special. This is the Hineni, and this is the prayer that on Rosh Hashanah Eve, Erev Rosh Hashanah, the cantor, sings this prayer on behalf of the congregation so that God might accept the cantor's prayer on behalf of the entire community. Oh, shave to the Lord, yes, 
So this next piece is by Debbie Friedman, and this was the last piece, as we know, that she ever wrote. This is her Shalom Alechem, and I'm joined here by Anne. Hi. <laughs>
Now I get to bring up Cantor Emma Lutz, senior Cantor of Stephen Wise Temple. Thank you for having me here. So great to be back. And this piece, many people have heard it, Modim by Cantor Jonathan Komisar. But while we were in lockdown, we recorded this song uh, for one of our remote virtual services. And I emailed Jonathan and said, do you have a duet version of this? And he said, no, but I'll write you one. So he made this for us, so I think that's pretty special. We've never sung it live. Yeah, only on <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Sha'atahu Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu Ve'imoteinu Le'olam va'ed Mohudim Anachnu You're not going to get away without hearing me do one or two of my own pieces. <laughs> um, so this is my Misha Berach. Mi 
Right. Thank you so much. Now I get to call up Cantor Jacqueline Raffi, AJRCA graduate. And uh, we couldn't be too Ashka normative here tonight. So, <laughs> so this is our Persian Ashkenafardic mashup that uh, <laughs> that we wrote uh, on Zoom during the pandemic. And this is also our first time singing it together in person for you. So this is Achat Sha'alti, and actually you can find this in the upcoming um, Transcontinental Music High Holiday Anthology, uh, which was arranged by Dr. Tali Tadmor. <laughs> Yeah. 
Jackie, don't go anywhere because now I'm going to call up all of our AJRCA students, alumni, faculty, whoever is going to sing on this tune to end our concert. I just want to say I love all of you guys so much and thank you for giving me such a wonderful six years at AJRCA. And I wanted to end tonight with this song called Le'ela, which means to transcend, to go beyond. And uh, normally when we sing the Kaddish, we say Le'ela once, but on High Holidays, we say Le'ela u Le'ela, beyond and beyond and beyond. And this experience at AJR has just been beyond. Thanks to <laughs> all of you. This is Leila.
Yeah, you can sit down now. <laughs> I used to be a cantor, but now I'm a rabbi, so I'll talk. <laughs> Meaning. Seriously, my name is Cantor Rabbi Sam Bradwine, and I'm the academic dean of the AJRC. I'm busting with Nachas here, I gotta tell you, buddy. Thank you. So, I'm gonna take the advantage of age to tell a couple of old man stories. My critics tell me I'm tell old man stories. I don't care. So one story is uh, a, a concert that I went to about 10 years ago in Palm Springs. And it was actually Craig, is Craig here? It was Craig Taubman, I don't think he's here. Um, and um, he had a backup band. And there was this guy playing piano. Now, first of all, cantors and cantorial students I'm sure you've been someplace where you're sitting in a shul and somebody says, have you ever thought about being a cantor, right? <laughs> so it still happens, seriously. So this guy's playing piano and then he gets to sing. And of course I went up to him afterwards and I said, have you ever thought about being a cantor? <laughs> Lo and behold, he did. And we are so lucky that you did. Thank you. The other story is something that happened years and years ago, and those of you contemporaries of mine, Chaim was Chaim, and uh, you, you probably heard this before. When we were getting started, the old guys, they were just guys back in those days, the old guys would say to us, you, go, you young guys are killing the service. <laughs> I'm here to say to you tonight, my friends, that the young guys and gals and people who are leading the service into the next generation are preserving Judaism. Mm -hmm. That's a <laughs> Josh, you have this amazing knack. I mean, I, that first night, I thought, okay, he wants to be a rock and roll star, right? We all thought that. No, all of a sudden he came and he's like, he has this, inc you have this incredible respect for the tradition. The Lewandowski sent me, I gotta tell you. That's, you know, it's my generation, okay, and older. But your creativity, what you, what you bring to the new stuff is just amazing. I, I sing your music, I sing your Hashti Venu, and I just, I, I love it every time I do it, and I'm gonna be singing other music of yours. So you have this amazing combination of the old and the new, but here's the most important word you the say. The new sock and the old sock. The, uh, there you go, do you hear that? <laughs> the new sock and the old sock, that's him, that's him. <laughs> but you, there was one word that you sang tonight that I think is more important than anything else. And that's la'ela, mm -hmm. it's la'ela. Because it's with la'ela to go above and go beyond that you have done in your six years with us at AJRCA but that you will continue to do in Temple Micah and who knows where. And so I'm here to say to you, my prayer for you and my wish for you is La'ela, may you go beyond. Thank you. Thank you. I don't get the last word. The last word, actually, I had the honor of being the reader for Josh's master's thesis. You know, they used to say Chazan meant Chazanam Zayn and Niranam. Cantors were fools. We're not. We have to write theses now. And so he's going to share some words from his thesis. Thank you. How about Cantor Sam Radwan? Thank you. So this is a three part program tonight, three ring circus, if you will. Um, so part two is just a little excerpt from my thesis. And uh, if you're interested, you can read the rest of it. There's a link back here. It's just joshgoldbergmusic.com slash thesis. If you want to check it out, it's a very light read, just 150 pages. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called From the Studio to the Sanctuary and Back, The Evolution of Recorded Commercial Worship Music in Judaism and Christianity in the United States. And so I'm going to read just the preface and maybe some of the intro. In eighth grade, I joined my first rock band. 
I had just started learning guitar a few months prior and knew a total of 10 chords or so and was recently equipped with a red Fender Squire and a 5-watt amp. The unnamed ragtag group of musicians were all more or less proficient on their instruments but had no clue how to play together as a band. Neither did I, but I did my best impression of Freddie Mercury <laughs> and tried to rally the band together as its frontman. I even brought an original song to the group, which at that point was severely lacking in repertoire. After about two rehearsals, the guys let me know that my duties in the band were no longer required. <laughs> they were transitioning to Christian rock. <laughs> it felt like a slap in the face. I went through the five stages of grief in short order. Denial. How could they fire me? I was the best thing about this band. <laughs> Anger. Well, screw them. This band sucked anyway. <laughs> Bargaining. Who's to say a Jewish kid can't play in a Christian rock band? Isn't that discrimination? Depression. Now that I repeat that sentence to myself, it does sound pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Acceptance. Guess I'll just go back to playing solo. I can still identify with the feelings of rejection and otherness that I experienced as a teenager. Music has been at the core of my identity since I first started singing and performing as a young child. Music was how I related to the rest of the world. Throughout high school and college, I felt I lived two separate and seemingly incongruous lives, the life of a secular musician and the life of a Jewish musician. One of them could play at a bar mitzvah in the morning and the other one play in a bar band the same night. In college, I could be playing at a frat party Saturday night and singing for children at Sunday school the next morning at 9 a.m. I always felt I wanted to hide my Jewish identity from my non-Jewish friends because I didn't think they would understand or relate to any of the music I was making in Jewish spaces. Being a member of a minority that makes up 0.02% of the world population can be a lonely experience. The combination of our minuscule numbers, a healthy dose of Jewish neuroticism, and augmented by the impending doom of the ever-rising levels of anti-Semitism can be a harrowing combination. I felt the sense of isolationism even more keenly as of late. In the midst of writing this thesis, my wife and I moved from LA to Nashville, Tennessee, AKA the buckle of the Bible Belt. <laughs> Aptly named, the city has five total synagogues and a whopping 2,500 churches. Working in a synagogue bound by an ancient calendar that 99.98% of my neighbors are totally oblivious to can sometimes make me feel like a man on a desert island. Perhaps a subconscious motive for writing this thesis comparing Jewish and Christian worship music is a way to make me feel less alone in the work that I do. While my Christian colleagues leading worship may pray to God by a different name, I think we have more in common than we have different. We can be united and strengthened by our similar goals and take pride in our individuality that we have inherited by our two faith backgrounds. Perhaps I'm not the only one who feels this sense of isolation. It's my hope that whomever takes the time to read this can benefit from the research, writings, and interviews to follow. So um, just to tell you a little bit about the rest, that was the intro and preface, chapter one. Uh, I go through the evolution of recorded worship music uh, from 1960 to present, starting with uh, Christian music, then go to Jewish music. Then chapter two, I did some musicological analyses of selected recordings. So I did them in pairs. The first uh, set was called The Renegades. So I did Larry Norman and Shlomo Karlbach. Uh, then The Girls Next Door, Amy Grant and Debbie Friedman. <laughs> and then the third was called Mega Worship, Bethel and Central Synagogue live from the pulpit. So those are the three pairings. And then chapter three was interviews uh, that I conducted with clergy, uh, with artists, with producers, uh, worship leaders uh, from Jewish and Christian faiths. So the entire transcripts of all these interviews are in there. So I interviewed uh, Julia Black, who's a worship leader at Westwood United Methodist here in LA. Uh, then Jason Catrone, who is a vocal coach and the founding member of a Christian pop group called Tenore. Then I interviewed Cancel Daniel Mutlu of Central Synagogue. Uh, Rick Recht of Rick Recht. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig Taubman. And, um, and those are the interviews I conducted, so you can check them out 
on this thesis, and I hope you will uh, might find it interesting. So, I finished it. That's what matters. Thank you. So now, without further ado, if you don't mind staying for just one more hour, <laughs> you don't have to, but um, I do want to share with you, this is a film that I've been working on for the last year. And so almost exactly one year ago, here at Stephen Wise over in the chapel, I debuted my album called Morning a Journey. And so it's a journey through the Shahri service, um, all original music. And so when I was recording this album, I decided I wanted to try something a little different when I released it. So um, with my friend Rachel Kahn, some of you might know, Hebrew priestess and uh, poet, we uh, worked on these eunim, these spoken word poetry, and put these little pieces together and made it into this film. So I hope you will watch and enjoy Morning a Journey, a visual album. Yeah. Yeah. For some refreshments out that way on the patio. And Dr. Tali Todmore. <laughs> and all the fantastic singers and musicians, and to the faculty and staff of AGRCA. So thank you, and thank you for coming and for watching, those of you who are watching. So, this is Morning a Journey, a visual album. <laughs> 